lot of Bernie's comedy is cultural. It drew upon his, you know, ethnicity and his, you know, his past. And, you, you know, you don't necessarily have to be an African-American to appreciate Bernie. Like his idols, Red Fox and Richard Pryor, Bernie used the shock value of foul language and off-color stories to give his comedy an edge. When he does it, I mean, he's, he's awfully funny. You know, and people don't take it personally. It's not meant to be taken personally. It's just comedy. One of the first clubs that Bernie used to test his new act was the Cotton Club, Chicago's famed jazz venue. Monday was amateur night. It was a predominantly black crowd, and Bernie let loose. I don't care what we do, blacks are serious. We can be playing jacks. We can be serious in the mall. I'm on my breeze, bitch. Bernie had found his audience, and within months, people in Chicago's black community spread the word. I saw him coming through the door. People saw him recognizing That's him. That's the guy I was telling you about. It seemed like it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. The audience got bigger and bigger. Bernie was on his way and nothing could stop him. In 1989, while vacationing in Las Vegas, the confident comedian convinced Red Fox to let him do a set during Fox's stage show. He walked up there behind stage and went. That's how he got up there and started talking to Red Fox. And I was like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I was, Because I was sitting there, I said, like, you just can't walk up there. He said, watch me. And he did. By 1990, 32-year-old Bernie Mac had a cult following in Chicago. But at the time, he was working as a driver for the Wonder Bread Company. He said, I can't take it no more. And I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, I really want to do my comedy. With Rhonda's blessing, Bernie stopped working for Wonder Bread and set out to pursue stand-up full-time. That spring, he started preparing for the Miller Lite Comedy Search, hosted by Damon Wayans. It was a chance for Chicago comics to get some national exposure. We're at the Regal, and he was one of the ten finals. I told my daughter, I said, he's going to win. <laughs> Your daddy's going to win. And then when he won, we just all stood up and lost it. <laughs> lost it. It was like we could not believe it. I won $3,000. That was the biggest payday of my life. And I put that in the fund for my daughter's college. Cause that was a fear of mine being able to support her to go to school. After that, it seemed like things started opening up for him. Recognition led to a string of high-profile gigs. Bernie opened for Dionne Warwick, Natalie Cole, and even his idol, Red Fox. Then in 1993, TV viewers got a taste of what clubgoers had been roaring at for years when the 35-year-old appeared on the HBO series Death Comedy Jam. Audiences on the raucous show were known for heckling comedians they didn't like, but Bernie was determined to win them over. The audience was hostile, and I came out, and I did my little mag, little walk-on, and everything, and I bam, cut it off, and I said, I ain't scared of you, mother The crowd loved Bernie's in-your-face attitude, and the improvised catchphrase quickly became part of his act. He would use it in approaching his audience to let the audience know, no matter what you do, how you do it, you can heckle, boo, whatever you want, I ain't scared. Hi, how you doing? Although most of white America still had no idea who Bernie Mac was, in the African-American community, he'd become a star. On the chicken circus, as they call it, you know, where it's all black people know you. He was very well received on those circuits. I've never seen you like this. Unbelievable. He's one of the funniest men ever. I'm out here to laugh tonight. I know you. But he was trying to get into movies too at that time, and he figured that would really bring him to mainstream. Max's first film was the Damon Wayans comedy Mo Money. Bernie played a doorman, and though he appeared only briefly in the movie. The role helped him land other small parts in a series of predominantly black films. He was the cameo guy. <laughs> Bernie Mac comes into a movie, he steals your movie, and then he goes back on the road. <laughs> Bernie was also ready to give his act a twist. 
At a time when black stand-up comedy was dominated by raunchy one-man routines, Bernie gave fans some old-school entertainment. He used to always say, you know how Flip Wilson had those variety shows and stuff? He said, I want to do something like that. In 1994, Bernie produced and starred in the Who You Wit Tour. The show featured the 10-piece Black Men Band and the Macaroon Dancers. It's an amazing thing. Bernie Mac funny is one thing. Hell yeah! Bernie Mac in front of a 10-piece band is a show. Well, I gave all this music, comedy, dancing at the same time. Cedric the Entertainer, 
and Bernie Mac. Damn, man, white folks here to see me? Ain't that a bitch? Hey! Well, when white folks come see you, know you successful, is it? I'm going to see Bern! They came right on time because I was getting burned out. I was doing two hours, hour, 45 minutes a night. 43 weeks out of the year. I got to the point where I got sick of hearing myself. Then this two-year-old with her no-sleeping ass. She don't never want to go to sleep like she was, you know, my sister got high with, you know what I mean? Like she must smoke, smoke reefer with her and did coke. Cause she hungry all the time and she wild alert, you know? Bernie was rejuvenated by the less demanding work schedule. And soon the show became bigger than anyone could imagine. Initially they did 30 dates, sold them all out. <laughs> and then they went larger and they went larger. At one point, the Kings of Comedy Tour was the most profitable tour on the road in the United States, period. I came in the house the other day at 1 o'clock in the morning. The six-year-old gonna walk past me like I'm a visitor. The two-year-old sent him downstairs to get her some milk and cookies. I said, where are you going? Get some milk and cookies. I said, Pimp is kind of late. Go on back in the room. He gonna go in the room, two-year-old said, where the milk cookies at? He gonna tell her, him downstairs. Like I ain't got no damn name. In 2000, Spike Lee documented the phenomenon with his concert film, The Original Kings of Comedy. D.L. Hughley, who had his own sitcom, replaced Guy Torrey. Bernie Mac was now suddenly in the center of the spotlight. They know Steve and Cedric from Steve Harvey show on WB. They know D.L. Hughley from being in variety shows, but Bernie, who's this guy? Who's this guy that's going on last? And destroying the crowd. Now everybody wants to know Bernie Mac. When the dust settled, many were asking the same question. Why doesn't Bernie Mac have his own TV show? They didn't know what to do with Bernie Mac before. They didn't know how they could put him on TV. They didn't know how he could be funny. I don't think it bothered him that much because he always said he really didn't want to do TV because TV handcuffs you. It stops him from being who he is. But he said if the right show came along, then he would consider it. One man who thought he knew how to bring Bernie to television was producer Larry Wilmore, a veteran of the hit Fox TV series In Living Color. Wilmore's idea was to take Bernie's outspoken attitudes about child rearing and pit them against a politically correct world that favored timeouts over corporal punishment. The show would be based on Bernie's stand-up routine about raising his sister's kids. You know, my sister do drugs. The state was gonna take the kids away, you know? But my black ass had to volunteer and accept these sons of bitches. Most networks were concerned that Mac's Take No Prisoners brand of comedy would never fly on television. But in 1999, Fox TV decided to take the risk. To see Bernie Mac on stage is a much more raw experience than watching him on TV. But TV can find a way to turn harsh comics into something a bit more palatable for mainstream audience. Bernie Mac put his heart and soul into the new series, juggling humor, drama, and an emotional resonance not usually found in half-hour sitcoms. I'm gonna kill one of them kids. Whatever. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love them. They my blood. I give them the shit off my back. You ever see a chicken with his neck run? <laughs> Laying to the side all legs and weak? That's what I'm gonna do to them kids. Talk back to me one more time. Snap! I'm gonna snap their neck off. <laughs> The Bernie Mac Show premiered on Fox Television on November 14, 2001. Joining Bernie as his on-screen family was Kalita Smith as his wife, Wanda, and Camilla Winbush, Jeremy Suarez, and Dee Dee Davis as the three kids dropped into his lap. I knew that it would either rise to the top or it would go underneath the radar and it would be a thing that people just didn't get because of the style, it's very innovative. You keep on talking to me with that attitude, little girl. I may not be your daddy, but I'll whoop your ass just like your daddy. And you go to jail like you was my daddy, too. Don't come out. I'm gonna bust your head to the white meat. Come on, now. That's right, I said, I'm gonna bust her head to the white meat show. And I ain't ashamed that I said it. And ain't nobody gonna make me take it back. 
from its pilot episode.